I do want to let you know that there may be some folks coming in. We we did extend an invitation to our friends um, who are who are also here, both at NFGS and, and other glass collectors. And uh, so there may be some folks wandering in during the talk. Uh, and of course, we would, we will welcome them. Okay. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce folks who really need very little introduction. So this is not going to be a long one, but. Uh, Russell and Kitty Umbraco have traveled here from their home in Nevada um, to be with us. They, they, we were here when they uh, arrived, more or less. We saw what their van looked like when they pulled in the parking lot. And um, they are not only speaking to us, but they're speaking to other folks. And they brought enough glass so that everybody got to see something new, I think, which is pretty, pretty cool. So tonight, they're going to talk about um, some rare and unusual uh, glass, stretch glass, that they have accumulated. Now, I was talking with Russell and Kitty earlier, and um, they've been at this since um, about 1965. And um, I was two years there, old. There are lots of us who wish that we could have been buying stretch glass in 1965, I'm sure, but we have here two people who were buying stretch glass in 1965 and we'll probably have some good stories to tell about so they are uh, among the premier researchers of stretch glass they have published about stretch glass they continue to speak and show they are um, our west coast folks they uh, do a wonderful job of putting up displays at other conventions and meetings that they go to to publicize stretch glass out there and of course they are part of the team of three that writes for Hooked on Carnival every Tuesday. And as Kitty says, you know, we each one of us only has to submit an article every three weeks, but it seems like those three weeks go by like three days and it's time to write another article. And I know Dave wow. feels the same way and I feel the same way. Man, time has never flown so fast as between those articles. But hey, you know, we got lots of readers and we get lots of great compliments when we go to the uh, conventions and so forth and people love what they're learning about stretch class so that's what it's all about so we have a lot to thank the Ambrakos for in addition to the 3,000 miles that they drove to get here and look at all the glass they brought with them so without further ado Kitty and Russell is all yours for the night good evening everybody thank you for inviting us and it was a very nice trip here. We didn't get into any really bad storms. So 3,300 miles through a long road. <laughs> so anyway. First of all, can I ask everybody a question? Dave had question and answer time, and he had a test for everybody. So we want to do a test also. It will be at the end. No, I'm going to do it at the beginning. On <laughs> See, after 52 years, that's what happens to you, you know? We can't agree on anything. But all, looking at all the glass up here, do you think that is stretch glass? Or do you think it's carnival glass? Okay, how many people say it's stretch glass? Raise your hands. How many people think it's carnival glass? <laughs> it's both. Everything up there is car is stretch glass, and there are a number of stretch carnival glass pieces. Did you know that stretch glass came in patterns that the carnival glass people recognize <laughs> on there? It does. See, we're not as far out as they think we are. Okay, I'll let Russell go to it. <laughs> As you can see, there are a variety of things that and match you the... Move forward. There's a light here. Whoops. We're having... We're well, there's too much feedback. We can't be close. Yeah. As you see, there are a lot of pieces here are the That's classic we never get along. stretch glass. A pressed iridescent I'm sorry, glass I'm in your way. of essentially no pattern whatsoever. When we were doing our initial research, there were very few books that even described it. The only person that we actually were able to get a hold of that called it 
stretch class was Rose Presnick. And she's the most gracious lady. She helped set up the stretch class club. Back up a little I can't. And <laughs> if you notice on your newsletter, there is a picture up there. Ah. And that's done by Rose. Watch out, there's water over there. I think Dave had an accident, didn't you? Or I your dog? I think this will work a lot better. If you're too close to another microphone, you get a lot of feedback. Yeah. So anyway, the pieces up here that really fit the definition of stretch glass, like this, no pattern. Yeah. This, no pattern. This. They're shaving mugs. This, this, this. This, you'll have this. Some people think that that might isn't. That's definitely an imperial piece, and it has a, a stretch finish to it. There aren't too many up here that have no pattern whatsoever. Now, I'm going to start with car vases before I let her go on with some other things. Car vases were typically put into limousines. Pick one up and show them. And they were also in purses. They did not come with your automobile. It was an aftermarket thing that you bought. Car bases are meant to go like this and this, you know? Now this one is all original with its holder. That holder attaches to the back post right behind the driver and the passenger and in some of the cars clear on the back side on uh, the back seat. Okay. Now, if you were riding in a car and it had a car vase, which car vase would you like to be next to? Spill truth. You're cheating, cow. <laughs> Why would you like to be next to this one? You're right. When he goes around a corner fast, this one here is going to splash all over, and this will contain the liquid. So if you have a choice, you know which one to choose now. <laughs> yeah. And also with the car vases, you'll see these little cutouts. And a lot of people say, oh, it's got a little bit of damage. Yeah. Try and jew them down a little bit, but it was meant to be, because that's where the screw fits. <laughs> now, the major maker of car vases is not Benzer. It is Diamond. These are all made by Diamond for Benzer. This is something you rarely see is an original box for Benzer. They were an aftermarket automotive supplier, kind of like Pep Boys or one of those, out of New York. And in the box, you have a wrapping, you have the vase, the holder, a picture of what it is, and a faux plow, flower, a faux flower. From the 1920s. Oh my gosh. We haven't invented anything new. We've just improved upon it. And they come in colors. They come in a topaz, they come in a, in a cobalt blue, they come in a celeste blue, they come in... Um, Florentine over there. But if you look over on all the greens, we've got four different ones out there, but they're all the green. And um, once in a while you'll run into one that is marigold, and it has a pattern and everything on it. Those were not made by Diamond. Those were made, Jeanette made them, and you'll see a lot of those. So, anyway, that's kind of your story on your flower vases. We tried to bring an example of every shape, and over there, with all the greens, you'll see the other shape that comes up and is kind of bulbous. That, too, contains the water when you go around a corner. So One problem with the car vases, the old car owners, you know, people that have old cars, they're in competition with us. So they like to pay a lot more than we like to pay for the car vases because it completes their limousine or, 
even the brand new Volkswagens on there. So if you have any questions about car vases, we'll talk about that later. But you will notice that this one has a, a chrome cap on it. This one does not. And they came both ways. And the regular Benzer marked car vase is a little ball on the bottom that says Benzer. And you'll find them with a Z backwards as well as a Z forward. Now what we wanted to do is point out that to begin with and then we'll go to the center section. What do we have most of in, in stretch glass? You have mostly Fenton stretch glass. In our experience we've seen more Fenton stretch glass than any other maker and that's our experience. Maybe some of you have had different experiences but on the west coast that's what we find mainly Fenton and then followed by Imperial. Find a lot of Imperial on the West Coast. And then Northwood, the others kind of dribbles and drabs. Why don't we start over here or over there and go across on there? What start you have here in the middle, he likes start focus in the middle. on Fenton. This is their easel. The first one of those that we bought, we bought out of the antique trader and it was 50 years ago. Shh. Anyway, skip the years. There's this little ad. And remember, we're on the West Coast. The Midwest got it first, then the East Coast got it, and then the West Coast got it because of the mail distribution. You know, they still think we're riding horses or maybe Pony Express. So you read everything through with a fine tooth comb and there was this ad for a Fenton sign with seashells on it and I, I had this vision of somebody went to the ocean and glued seashells around this little Fenton thing. It's long before they had the new Fenton signs on there but I think it was 10 or 20 dollars. We had a 20 dollar limit so I wrote a check and sent it off. It, since we got the antique trader so late, it wasn't even worth calling them because in those days it cost a lot of money to call. So I sent the check off and about a month or two later, because they had to cash the check first and then, because there's no PayPal, you know, this is the dark ages. <laughs> and so here comes this little tiny box and I thought, how can seashells be in a little tiny, maybe they're floating in the bottom, you know, because it kind of rattled on there. Anyway, I opened it up and here's this nice Celeste Blue easel that said Fenton on it. And then I looked at it and I says, oh yeah, there are seashells on it, but they're not seashells from the sea. And I was really happy. And he, he traveled all the time, which was a blessing. And in other words, it wasn't a blessing because he was out on the road three weeks out of the month and a week home. And the week home, he's fixing everything. He's calling his parents, making sure they're how, you know, so we didn't see much of each other on there. So when he came home, I'd have a table full of glass that I'd bought while he was gone on there. And then he would open up his suitcases and it was good. It was like Christmas, you know, once a month we had Christmas. Anyway, go ahead. Well, we're going to start at this end and work this way. And in no particular order. That's because he's down there. Because we're not going to segregate out, um, I, you see, we've got stretch glass mixed in with the carnival okay. glass. Let's start. Now we're going to start here with the Big Cookies Amber Bowl. This was out of the Fenton Museum. And we're not sure if it was an experimental piece or if it was something they were trying to produce. But as far as we know, that's the only one of those. In gold or amber. But Tom Burns, he's kind of, he likes to spend our money. And he calls up before the stretch convention and he says, I've got a white Big Cookies uh, compote basket for you on there. And I said, oh, good. And he says, it's the only one ever known. They'll never find another one. And you know Tom Burns. Anyway, somebody was bidding against us in a green shirt. 
I think. <laughs> and Tom, just a little more, just a little more on there. But we got it. And so now somebody else on has down one line. in white. But we've only got the one gold one so far. But one of you probably has another one. So Going on down the line, what you have here is Northwood's Peacock. And that has really good stretch all the way around it. The original owner of this thing paid an arm and a leg, and then he decided to sell it to us for not much. He took a tremendous loss on it. But you will find this, they call that sapphire, but you will find these with the really bright, shiny iridescence. This has everything you want for Celeste Blue. It has the stretch around the edge, it has the good color, and has the pinks and the blues and greens. And with carnival glass collectors, they like dimples. It's a, a little raised area inside of it. And that spreads the light over it and you see it better on there. But it's a carnival glass thing. Us stretch glass collectors don't care. Now this Celeste Blue piece is one of the more desirable carnival patterns in Celeste Blue. Kind of show it around. That was Don Moore's, and first time we met him, and we went over to his place, I spotted it on the wall, and I said, Don, I want it. And he says, someday. And for about 20 years, we had someday on there, and then he passed, and I thought, oh, there goes my plaid bowl. And Connie, his wife, called me up, and she says, Don left a note here saying that you wanted the plaid bowl. You can have it for X number of dollars. And she had a number of other things on the list that I wanted. And so we raced over to our place and we looked at him again and you scrutinized. You know, you, you know the game. So anyway, when I was writing out the check, I was so nervous. I'd never written out a check for that much money for glass ever before. And so all the way here, and every time we take it out, somebody gets back into the car. And I tell Russell, either speed up or put your brakes on really lightly, but don't put your brakes on, you know, so they run into us just so they'll get away from the back end of the car. <laughs> so we made it out here, pray that we make it back home. <laughs> now, this one has everything you want in the way of carnival, stretch, only it's relatively new. This was an anniversary piece, and... You know, you, you just can't do better than that for the acanthus pattern. People that don't know now would see that at a flea market, pick that thing up and says, what a bargain, a thousand dollar piece of glass for fifty dollars. And then they find out it's new. But, it's on the back. But it's ICGA. well written on the back. It says ICGA 1995 uh, Dallas. The unfortunate thing is, and we've seen a lot of this at Western flea markets, people have grinding tools. And not only do they have good grinding tools, they have good polishing tools. We've seen a lot of glass that was uh, trademark signed that has been ground off, particularly imperial glass. So something to watch for. Sometimes you pick up a rarity, it might be new. Something that was fun in the beginning is we're reading through the antique trader the old GI glass, and actually it's IG glass, which is the new glass, but they were convinced it was old GI glass, probably from World War II or World War I. <laughs> Who knows? It made life fun. So along here we have more of the Celeste Blue bowls. We couldn't bring all that we have up on the wall, but uh, she just died for this when she first saw it. And... Uh, it's Northwood's nut bowl in the wild rose. Thank you. Yeah, it's the wild rose. Some of you know Marie Caps. She since passed away last year. She owned that for many years. We were fortunate enough to acquire it. It's supposed to be one of a kind, but we'll see how many turn up now. <laughs> <laughs> and this one. I don't know how many years, oh, we wrote it on the back. When we do talks, names and everything like that just go flying away, and I never do know all the numbers that Dave has. So if you want to know the number of something, just ask Dave. He knows. What we didn't write on the back 
which was one? the date in which we acquired this. But oh, most of these less blue that. pieces we've acquired over a period of about 30 years. This is the um, lotus and grape. It's a fairly common piece, but you just don't see them out that often. Again, the carnival glass people just go nuts for these. You getting it on there? Yep. Okay. And the pond lily looks about the same as that, but isn't. These are fairly rare. Well, carnival glass people have more fun naming patterns of glass. And if you look at it, you can really see, you know, the pond lily. But some of us out in Nevada don't have ponds, so it kind of looks like some of the other patterns. That's the reason why we collected stretch glass in the beginning. I couldn't remember the names of all the patterns. Now, these are the most common celeste blue pieces you'll see. This is Fenton's... Um, Two row. Two row basket leaf. This is a this is an open edge two row. And uh, they come in all kinds of colors. They have three row also, but we didn't want to bore you with too many of them. Oops. And they come in all different shapes and two or three sizes. Moving this way, we'll do the second shelf. We took care of these. This particular mug. There's two known. One has a big crack in it. Two known right now. And there's a picture that goes with it because it's shown in the Northwood catalog. And this is the little handled Barbella pattern. And if you look in your in your Northwood book, you'll find it in there, but not iridized. The lady we bought that from was in a small town in far northern California little town known as Wairika. Anybody ever heard of Wairika? Well, very oh, good. Oh, wow. But Two it, people. It, it took us several years to acquire her perfect one. And I said, well, where did you get it? Garage sale down the street. And she had a little <laughs> antique shop. I said, well, did you ever go down and see what else she had? That was it. So um, I know one resides somewhere in a collection around here. And I don't know who it is that we sold it to. It was one of the stretch glass members, the cracked one. Now we get into the Fenton stripe opal and the drape opal. And it's hard to get the glasses if you have the pictures. It's just hard to get glasses. There are pictures to go with them, but we're kind of limited on space on there. Then we have Northwood's concave diamond. Comes in three colors. The usual Celeste Blue, the Topaz. This used to be the color that everybody went for, the rarest color. These things sold for hundreds of dollars. Now they don't. I think the last one I got for under $20. It kind of averaged out though. We bought a couple over a hundred. Now we are not quite sure about this. This is kind of like one of those U.S. glass pieces, and we think maybe it held cigarettes, but it's unique unto itself. Well, that's what David suggested, that it held cigarettes, didn't you, Dave? You found it someplace? Mm, don't think of it, and, and I'm, I'm leaning that it may actually be a Lancaster piece. Could be. It's different. It's the only one we've ever seen. It's a Tom Burns special. <laughs> And of course, you've got Fenton's sugar. We've never seen the creamer. What's unusual about this one, it has the matching handles. Matching handles in the tangerine. Now, you see them with the blue handles. So, if anybody's ever seen the creamer, would like to know about it. And purchase it. <laughs> This is the U.S. glass field thistle in their white, iridized. We've never seen a sugar, never heard of a sugar. So and far, it's the only one to turn up in the white. And the same with the... No, this is their, their contribution, contribution to Celeste Blue. Yeah. 
It's kind of a muddy blue. Never seen a sugar, never heard of a sugar. This is just a cute piece. Don't know who made it, but it's in the topaz. Well, I think you know, don't you, David? Bug Doc? Again, we think that may be U.S. glass. Could be, and there's four of them? Three of them? Uh, Bill, uh, we had a meeting in, in Chicago, one of our meetings, and Bill Prawl showed up with four of those in a box. Oh. And, and uh, I think Maidley got one, I got one, Jen got one, and you got one. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, we got okay. unfortunately, Bill can't be with us tonight. He's under the weather. Um, these are made by Diamond. There's there's a pair of them. There's the white one and their Silas Blue, and um, they're out of their. This is a whimsy out of their punch cup, and this of course is the punch cup. Now the next pair of Celeste Blue pieces we have. The reason that the vase and the perfume bottle are sitting there together is because the vase is made from the perfume bottle. They're a, a diamond optic and they're by Fenton. And this is out of Rose Slady's auction. Can you hold that one up so everybody can see it? Oh, I don't think so. That, uh, I shake too much. <laughs> Do you want me to hold it? <laughs> <laughs> the person in here who's dying to have it back again is sitting right back of you. <laughs> He's bobbing his head. Not very big, but it's it's out of the, the perfume bottle. We had to fight a lot of people for that. Including our auctioneer for tomorrow night. Okay, a centerpiece thing. We have pictured here two unique pieces by Northwood. Northwood is very famous for their their um, tornado bases. So you can see. And those of you who have yeah, reference to so you can see Rose Presnick's book, your way. those are called tadpole, tadpoles by her. But at any rate, these are the two that were see? in the Rota auction. Oh, no, I'm just trying to. Um, I'll recently, get my turn. both whimsies, and I had the pleasure of knowing the owners of those, All holding of the, the pieces, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, they have since passed in the last couple of years. But when people tell you that stretch glass is cheap, uh, tell, tell them. Yeah, you're not going to top this. Right on there, it says, Northwood Celeste Blue Stretch Tornado Vase with pinched tricorner top. Only one known, $60,000. Now, do any of you have one? <laughs> Did any of you purchase that one? Now, the former owner of that, before it went to auction and all, what do you think he paid for it? $60,000. It didn't go up, didn't go down. In the wisteria, similar. Has a cut-off foot. It's out of the same mold. Well, they're when speculating you look. it's but, a cut-off foot. Well, when they looked at it, it was ground. They've taken that bottom part off. I'll take it. And it went for several thousand. I think it was like twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Dollars. So those those are your. You have one. Two. <laughs> two highest prices of stretch glass to ever happen. I couldn't even start the bid. It was Coming depressing. down right in the center. As far as we know, that's the only one to turn up. It, it's made by Fenton. It's tangerine, and more than that, we don't know anything. Russell got up at the crack of dawn to go out to the flea market. And I told him, I says, bring home something good, but really small, because we don't have any more room. He brings that home. Another time I told him not to bring anything home that was big. He came home with an S repeat punch bowl set. <laughs> at a local garage sale. That was our one lucky time, you know. Russell, is the, the handle dish, is that the inoffensive catalog somewhere? This? This? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. We saw and, it. And, and I was going to bring a picture out of the catalog, and I can't find it in our in our books. So we saw it once, but it's not described as being iridized. It's it's in crystal glass. 
Now we have what everybody says are super rare. Get the only one. Well, these are the two shaving mugs in the Celeste Blue and in the Topaz by Fenton. And I'm pretty sure they were made in the 30s because there's a page in the Fenton catalog from the mid-30s for barber supplies. And it shows one of these exact mugs, which I have in milk glass at home, um, a barber bottle, a waste jar, and I think it's called a sterilizer. Okay, so. let's find out how many of those mugs there are. How many people have the Celeste Blue mug? One. Anybody else have a Celeste Blue? Two. We have two. Two? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, how two. many have the Topaz mug? One. That's all? <laughs> Stretch? No. Oh, shoot. Okay, so, so there's two Topaz mugs. Send it back and get it there's, stretched. You have a blue. No. Oh, okay. No. Oh. And there's three blue Don't ones. Don't you have any cow? Um, the oh. wands have one, so that's four in yeah. the blue, and that's all we've heard of. So four in the blue, two in the yellow. That's pretty rare. So the, it was a it was a line item. Working our way in between is a little powder puff jar, and what's unusual about this. When the Stretch Glass Society decided to have everybody submit what they thought was the, the best piece in their collection, that actually won, which surprised me beyond anything else. Well, it's best, buddy, the perfume that you have should have been with it. Yeah, but the, the perfume is diamond optic, and, and in the catalog, that that jar comes both plain and in diamond optic. And, and if there's a, a perfume or cologne in diamond optic, you kind of wonder, did they make the jar also in a diamond optic? Yeah, <laughs> there's a good chance that it would look yeah. nice though with that. Oh yeah, no. We can make diamonds in there. Because the, the stopper on the, the perfume is exactly that same. I know. Mm -hmm. How many of those are around? Anybody else have a perfume? A perfume There's that would go one, with the, the Celeste Blue? Is, does it have diamond optic in it? Wow. So there's three, there's three. of them? Wow. Well, not I'm many. surprised. Not many. Does anybody else have a powder jar like that? In diamond optic? Do you have a powder jar? Hmm. There are some plain transparent pink ones that I've worn in Sue Piper had. One. But were they iridized? No. No? There's so, a pair of red ones, too, that blue. aren't iridized. Yeah. Oh, shoot. We need to do something about that. <laughs> I'd love to have red. <clears throat> I know, but that's small. I can make room for that. <laughs> we don't have room for another cap. Now, we, these are definitely... We don't have room for anything. Northwoods. That's their tree bark pattern base. And they come the small ones, come curved up. And sometimes they don't have the tree bark on the base. Out they the forgot to put it on there. It. And they come in a couple different sizes. But as soon as you see that tree bark base, hunt around. A lot of them have an in in there. Mm -hmm. And Northwood also made the one without the tree trunk. I think they were lazy that day. And I don't think either of these have... Oh, this one does have the end in a circle right yeah. on top. Yeah, some do and some don't. Then we have the diamond basket. This, I really had to talk hard to Mr. Crowell to get that. He showed it to me, and I said, yeah, I'd really like to have that. Kitty'd like it for her birthday. It was nice. I was surprised. And he surprised me. He came over to my room, and he says, she should have this. Wasn't she? I was going to say, he wanted some green for it. <clears throat> okay, what's unusual here is the extreme red-orange color of this thing. I don't think we have any light in here that's bright uh -huh. enough. What do you think? Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Keep it away from the light. When we went back in uh, 1973 to, I think it was the American Convention, 
somebody brought that piece and showed it to us and we absolutely could not believe that the piece existed. And we went for another 20, 30 years, you know, and then it came up from auction and we had competition <laughs> on it, but I wanted it, so I got it. These are kind of fun, the optic ones. This is the Royal Purple by Northwood and it comes in another color. And we it, have it in clear also, Persian and, Pearl. But it was years before we found out it was made by Northwood. It's just such an unusual but nice piece. It almost looks like a piece of art glass. Now, sometimes the white ones, if you put them in a window, they'll start to turn purple. And I've seen a lot of carnival glass people say, I've got this lavender thing. And I take one look at it and I say, yeah, it's sun colored. Almost all of the imperial white pieces will turn purple on that because of the sand. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's the manganese in there. And there's somebody around this general area has access to a neutron activation. Now what that does, it accelerates the color change. I've seen in some of the antique shops ketchup bottles that are dark purple. Yeah, they're really dark. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. not a good idea. The purists and the glass collectors, even in my bottle collecting world, it's kind of a no-no. If the sun naturally does it, okay, but we prefer the original color. It's damaging the I believe so. I believe mm -hmm. so. The naturally sun-colored pieces have more of a pink tone to it, and those with the reactor have a dead purple. It has no life to it. We've seen some of them where we know they were under the ultraviolet, the medical grade ultraviolet mm -hmm. lights for up to two years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they come out that. They're yeah. Extremely, yeah. extremely purple, very dense purple. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where those that you have in the window, we have one piece of ice blue carnival glass, a good luck bowl, and it was sitting on the shelf, and half of it is purple blue, which is kind of weird color, and then the other half is the ice blue color. And it, it's, it's kind of different and neat that I was surprised we did a, a program on oddities and that was one of the pieces that we had in there and I thought oh everybody's just going to ignore it or all uh, and they really liked it I was surprised. Now you find this coin spot um, in all kinds of colors the scarcest color to find however is the cobalt blue stretch. Well it's, you find a lot of them in just plain old marigold. There's one in uh, purple amethyst stretch yeah and we haven't seen it but and it also comes amethyst not stretched but carnival and it's a pretty piece but I need the stretched amethyst with iridescence on it we, we have some other colors in that the celeste mm -hmm. blue is fairly common in it on the west coast I know about back here because it it has turned out that there's different glass in different parts of the country that show up. And of course this is one of Fenton's with that blue crest. We just thought that was neat as could be. And that is blue glass that was applied. Now on the candlestick here, that is painted on. I guess it was too expensive to put the crest around there, so somebody painted it on there and through the internet I bought a, a vase and it said that it had blue threaded glass around it. So of course I bought it. It's painted. But it's kind of a pretty piece and it does have the Fenton Museum numbers on it so I decided to keep it. But I was disappointed. Now one of the more unusual pieces we ran into in Las Vegas, Nevada in, in an antique shop, I saw this little box. I said, oh, okay, neat. Typical 20s, young ladies serving something, says lemon plate, fork, 
and I just wish it said something more than that on the box. It's got some sort of a picture on the side that looks like the young lady. I opened the box and I said, oh my gosh. And then we found and about there two weeks later. That's what was in uh -huh. there, a Grecian gold octagon plate and along we, with the little Ivoroid. There it is. The Ivoroid fork. Mm -hmm. And about a week later, we went to the Alameda flea market and we found another box that I thought was just exactly like it and I was going to leave it there. But Russell says, oh, it's only $2. Let's take it. We'll have two of them, you know. So we purchased it, got home, and we were looking at the thing. And it had different writing on it. And inside, it had a topaz little lemon plate that's nice and stretchy and all. And I couldn't find it in the cupboard, so. I have two of those, one in the topaz and one in the uh, Celeste. Oh, a Celeste blue one? In the box. In the wow. box. Wow. Same box? No, no. Two different boxes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Neat. The Celeste blue. Well, the thing that's really hard to find is, is a box. Sharon? What's the first thing you should throw out? The box. Yeah. Sharon? I have a Topaz one with the box and the one with the one. Great. Now, this was one of those oddball things that you're walking through a major antique show, and it just reached out and grabbed me. I said, that's cute. And... It is. It's the uh, the company put the little silver rim around it with a little silver handle. Beautiful cut work, and you know it was made for a gift. But we just thought this thing was beautiful. Has all the elements of being a piece of imperial glass. And it was a good gift. It was a great Christmas. Now we have the marmalade jar, which there's one in green over there. And they're, they're fairly scarce. You'll find the bottoms without the lids. What's unique about these, it has the cutout. Now, how many of you have a marmalade jar? Cal? Which color? Any color. They generally come in green and, and topaz. Yeah, and there's also a Celeste blue one around okay. on there. You got it? No. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Cal has one. Who else has one? One. Anybody else? Those are scarce little guys. And Frank Fenton said that they were put on the table, usually with a little saucer on them underneath for you to put the spoon on rather than a big... I know it fits in the one um, the, the cheese, cracker the plate. Cheese, the, yeah, the cheese and cracker plate, it fits in that ring perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Frank said they, they would be put on a, a little saucer for the spoon on there. But they're really tough to find. But does the, the, the little saucer have a ring for it, or it just sits on a regular saucer? I think it sits on a regular saucer, because I asked Frank if there was an embossed ring for it, or a piece with an embossed ring in there, and he said it didn't look like it. He had a picture of it in one of his sketchbooks. And he said it really wasn't that popular because everybody was breaking the lids yeah. <laughs> on there. And I can see why. Yeah, we find a lot of bottoms. Yeah, I've got, I got a Celeste bottom, green bottom, another yellow bottom. So if anybody ha finds tops, let's get together. Now the top three pieces here, if I cover up the tops of them, you see it's all the same mold. And they made a... Bath salts jar, wide lid, wide opening, perfume, narrow lid, narrow top. And then they made the courting lamp out of that. And it was actually made out of basically that. And Frank told us a story on that. He says, why it is a courting lamp is because when the young man and young lady got together in the house. Her dad would light that. It doesn't hold a whole lot of oil. When it would burn down, it's time for him to get out. <laughs> get out fast. And he would be looking underneath the door to see. I asked Frank, I says, did, 
did your father ever use a courting lamp? And he says, no comment. <laughs> and then on the upper part, you've all seen, um, it's sometimes referred to as an elephant's eye cup, but it's a big master salt with the dolphin stem on it. And they come in three colors, uh, the green, the celeste, and velvet rose. the velvet rose. Has anybody heard of any other colors? We think it's only the three colors now. Velvet rose? Yeah. yeah. We have that. How many people have any? You have one? Dave? No. Cal? What colors do you have, Cal? It's a test. Blue, green, and velvet rose. Yeah. I thought it was I've Celeste got, Blue and Florentine. I've got the top one that, that somebody must have busted the, the dolphin and they cut it off so it looked like a little canoe. Oh, okay. oh, that's cute. The reason why Cal is saying the blue and the green, he's been talking to us because we just came from ICGA and, you know, Carnival Glass people, it's Celeste Blue, they do agree with that, but then it's ice green and ice blue and then pink. And you have to remember which convention you're at. So, forgive This is us. just a really nice little vase, and I think you brought one also. And um, not sure who made this one, but... Who made it? Bug it's Doc? Fenton. It's Fenton. Fenton? That's I what I thought. Fenton finally fessed up with it. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay. How many more are out there? Anybody? I, anybody? What color is yours? Uh, Marigold. Marigold? Oh, that'd be pretty. Yeah. I think mine's a little more. Topaz? Two for topaz. Blue? Ooh. Yeah. So, so they do come in other colors. That's the only one I've ever seen until I saw bug docks. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're getting down to a few of the more interesting pieces. For many years, the Celeste Blue Double Dolphin fan base were not available. They were considered extremely rare for many years. And then all of a sudden, they started to show up. So we've got one of each size. The one s color that does not seem to exist is the Persian pearl. There's one that they think is, but when you put it on a white surface, it's actually very light pink color. But when you put it next to pink, it looks like Persian yeah. pearl. So it's kind of, you know, if you it's, want a pink one, light. you got it. Or if you want a Persian pearl one, you got it. Just have the right backgrounds. This one here is my favorite. The cracker jar. I had just gotten my cell phone, and that came up on eBay. Or, no, it was on Seeks, I think, wasn't it? <coughs> anyway, it came up on one of them. And I just had my cell phone, and I didn't really know how to work the cell phone. So we went out to dinner with our family, and they all know that we're nuts, that his cousin collects trains, and the other cousin collects whatever we collect on there, and then the rest of the family knows the three of us are nuts. So anyway, I was, you know, bidden while I was at the table, and I kind of had it down on my lap because I didn't know how to really use it. Well, they were all kind of looking at me. So I excused myself and went to the bathroom, and I kept bidding in there, and I think I was in there about 10, 15 minutes. Finally, one of the cousins came in to see if I was all right, and of course I was all right. I was sitting on the stall bidding on this thing like crazy, and I finally got it, and I think I was bidding against Cal, wasn't I, Cal? No? Oh, wow. Well, somebody else really wanted it, but I wanted it really bad. So now, every time I excuse myself and go to the restroom, they say, are you coming out tonight or are you going to stay in there all night? <laughs> We're going to do some candlesticks now. Do you want me to hold them? These are the cut ovals. And these are in Marion Hartung's book as cut ovals, as carnival glass, period. 
And uh, she didn't think too much of stretch class, believe me. When I met her in Emporia, Kansas, she, uh, she didn't think much of stretch class. Let's leave it that way. Yeah, she called us the stretch class people, people. And then I saw a really pretty bowl, and I called it by Presnick's name. And Miss Marion did not like me very well at all. Even though I was Don Moore's friend, she didn't like me. Anyway, these come in a couple sizes, as you saw, and a lot of different colors. And the most popular color uh, is the red. Everybody wants the red, and they exist in both sizes. But there's also a different cut ovals. One of the ladies has one in her room. That's oh, got, yeah. It's got cut work in and around the and base. Little tiny and cuts. little tiny ones. They're and beautiful. They're scarce, but they do turn up. Mm -hmm. But everybody likes the cut ovals because if you look hard, you can find a bowl that's cut ovals bowl. We need to get now. Here. It's raining it's outdoors. Raining. Okay. Now everybody knows these are Northwood. No <laughs> doubt about that. They're the it's only russet. ones that made them. Huh? It's russet color. They're this, Northwood. Yeah. Didn't you teach us that today? Yeah, but russet what? But what you have here is a candlestick. Anybody deny that's a candlestick? No. What you have over here is a lamp made from the candlestick mold. Yeah. And it's for real. I don't know now, the I way in which those show are made, you guys. the mold the side down, is poured in the mold this way. The plunger has a mandrel that's about 12 inches long goes and down. goes right down the bottom and comes out the top and has a second piece on that plunger that punches a hole in the base. That's what she's going to show you. My fingers are too That's big. That's for the wire. Mm -hmm. Right there. And there's and a the hole that goes goes all the way through. And it when you look at the here. bottom of this thing, you can tell that the mandrel went in from the bottom Good. and when it was retrieved, came out dragging glass with it, leaving this kind of a lumpy look Looks like a candlestick bottom. holder on, in reverse. On uh, we there. have Rose Presnick's pair of Celeste blue ones, along we with the original shade. They came with kind of a little cloth shade with little dangles on it. And they're complete. They have the wiring and everything in them. It wasn't too many months after we bought her collection that we found that at a, a local show. Now, does Since anybody she, have one of those lamps? Yeah. You have one. Two. You have two. What, what colors? colors? Hmm? The celeste blue, or sapphire blue, because it is. Well, you, you have yours in blue. Celeste blue. Yeah. Okay. Two of them. So then there's four in celeste blue, and there's only the one so far in the russet, and somebody told me they had a broken one. Well, that's the whole story: is they break in the manufacture. If you don't have your temperature of that mold just right, the glass just right, the mandrel just right, the timing just right to pull it out, you've made a mess in the mold, you've cracked it, and it's, it's just a very difficult thing to make. So Fenton didn't even try to do that. Northwood tried, and apparently the blue ones were more successful than any other color. I hope all of you um, subscribe to Hooked on Carnival Glass that Cal mentioned that we're writing for every Tuesday. And I think it's one or two Tuesdays from now you'll read the story about the candles stick and the candles. And it's on the internet. It's absolutely free. Uh, they have all kinds of discussions on stretch glass as well as carnival glass. And it's kind of fun. And if there's an article you don't care for, you just kind of skip over like you do in a book. But there's lots of articles in there, so you might try it out. Okay. Here. Hold that. Now, what we're going to show you hey, we're are, music. Are, are two vases, both Northwood. And at first glance, you say, oh, well, this is just a twisted one of these. Yeah, that's not there. working. See, everything looks the same. Then you take a close look and says, oh, wait a minute. They're they two are different, different, two different molds. 12 panels, 
Um, That's a twisted. This one, I think, was one, two, three, four, five, six panels on this one. And it's a number 727. We commonly find them in the sapphire color in stretch glass. And there's also candlesticks in two different sizes that go with them, the twisty ones. And the, uh, the blue one here is a 728. So if you look in your Northwood book, you'll find that they are definitely different. Ooh, oh. Excuse me. And, and, they're, and the, the twisters are oh. two sizes of holes. Why don't you go outside? Go outside and I'll do it. Our dog is ill and... It's not, it's not the vet. Oh, good. It's probably her good. cousin. The vet's been calling us every night to give us an update on our dog. And I think it's my cousin. Oh, did you turn him off? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the way to do with family. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> don't, tell our, don't tell our family. <laughs> do you have the, the blue vase and tobacco? Yes. Yes. Can't and bring everything. Two sizes of candles. Can't bring everything. Yeah. We don't have a candlestick, though, to match the topaz one. So if any of you have the twisted topaz candlesticks, we would love to have one to make a match with the vase, you know. Sets really like to stay together. It's kind of like families. Sometimes you don't like them, but most of the time it's kind of nice to have them on Christmas and New Year's. And there. this is our mystery vase. We think as cute as can be. Don't know really who made it. It could have been most any one of the manufacturers. We haven't really heard of another one around. It almost looks like it's made out of a vase and a candlestick. It reminds but, uh, me of that dolphin piece we were showing. Only I'm hoping that's a lot older because I paid a lot more for it because it was so different. But anyway, you look at it, it's a bud vase. You look at it, it's a perfume. You look at it, it's made by two pieces of something. So. Has anybody ever seen one similar to that? You guys are flunking. I need help here. <laughs> you know, we got to do research for our next publications, don't we, Bug Doc? <laughs> okay. The last two Northwood vases in their cobalt blue. Well, and as Dave said today, their sapphire blue comes in a number of different oh, colors. This is really dark. So. That's the cobalt dark celeste or, a or royal, dark sapphire. The royal blue too. What color do you call them, Bug Doc? I'd say those are really dark sapphire. Really dark. Yeah. But yeah. that makes them fun. We have a couple of more Tom Burns specials up here on there. This bowl here. If you want to get a hernia, lift it up. <laughs> Two pounds of glass. Thank goodness Tom brought it to Fresno for me or we couldn't afford postage on it. And it's kind of neat. They started to make it marigold around the edge and then they ran out of marigold dope so they just put the Persian pearl dope on it. And it's the thistle bowl by Fenton. Pineapple. Or pineapple. White Persian pearl. Sorry. And uh, we know of another one that has that same effect on it. So it's maybe it's experimental, but anyway, there's another one around. Not the pineapple bowl, though. Yeah, I talked to somebody that had oh. one. Tom, you told me it was the one and only. <laughs> that is there what you, you tell me over the phone when you're trying to sell it to me. <laughs> Okay, here's another one of Tom's one of a kind. This is our dancing ladies in the Persian pearl. Dancing ladies you commonly you see, not iridized. You'll find them in marigold, but this one is iridized, is stretchy, and it's, it's quite nice. So how many of you have one of those in your collections? The thing that was unique about this, we were at one convention and the gentleman came in with his young son Oh, and yeah. his son walked over I to the display, you. and he says, hmm. He picks it up out of the display picks it up without asking. And tells his dad, says, go over and pay the lady. I know. And I'm standing there, my mouth is, oh, wow, on there. Luckily, the kid didn't break it, because, you know, once this glass is broken, it's gone on there. 
There's one of those in Pennsylvania in a fan base. That oh, would be, be nice, Tom. Uh, I, I in fan base? No. Oh, just like that? In stretch? In wow. Tom? See? Now we have more are showing up. That's why we asked some of these questions, to see if there are more of them, more of these pieces. I have, many years ago, there was a square one. Square one square yeah. I, and then a fan base, weren't you saying, Tom? Yeah. Okay. So when, yeah, I've seen that one uh, pictured on there. So when Tom tells you it's one of a kind, it's at the moment he's speaking. Only one knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, every piece of stretch glass is one of a kind because you can't duplicate the stretch effect. <laughs> there you go. You just saved his <laughs> reputation. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. We've known Tom forever. So one of the more easily attainable Celeste Blue pieces is your Persian medallion. And, you know, it, it's a very busy pattern, but it's very nice. And it looks so good hanging on the wall. And all of the other Persian medallion colors that it comes in, almost every color, none of them that I have ever seen have stretch on them. And the others all have iridization on them, of course, and there's some without iridization, but no others with the stretch. And this is also a hard pattern to come by in Celeste Blue. This is the Holly by Fenton. And the Carnival Glass Collectors love Holly. And but some people th have around. a plate in Holly that's up in one of the rooms for a display. Or at least she told me it was a display. Okay. Now we're into your vases here. Okay, let's do them fast because we're running out of time. I'll take care of that. Oh. Just set it on the table. It Just set it on the table. It doesn't want to There sit. we go. Yeah, it has a mind of its own. Okay, we're down to the last two and then questions. Definitely always referred to as carnival glass, the thin rib or fine rib. Uh, the pulled fine rib. rib is by Fenton, the, and then we have the pulled loops. By Dugan. By Dugan, and this one just has a frosty and stretchy finish to it. It almost looks like it's sandblasted. There are not one, many of those around on there. Okay. But they show off extremely well in the cupboard. Mm-hmm. Anybody so, have any questions? Yes. Um, when he was talking about the concave diamonds, um, Mr. Umbraco said that there were... It's Russell. Colors. Mr. Umbraco is his dad. Sorry. Russell, <laughs> <laughs> there three yes, there's Russet. Okay, you didn't, the, say, you didn't say the third color. You said it was blue and the topaz, and you never said the third color. Russet. Okay. And we have the Russet picture out on display with the green yeah. glass over there. Okay. With the tumbler. Yes. Yeah, that picture and the tumbler need to be together. Okay. Cal. They, they are together in my cupboard. <laughs> oh, you've got another one? Yeah, I just didn't bring the rest of the tumble. Oh, well, there goes my another one of a kind. I think that's a Jim C one of a kind, but anyway. Did you have a tumble again? Yeah, I have a rest of tumble. Ah, I really got to talk to Jim. <laughs> yes, Tom. Okay, Tom. We worked hard. It was more of a, a cute story. You were pointing out that Salat or the uh, Wisteria tornado base. That originated up here in Cleveland, Ohio, by the way, for all you people from Ohio. Uh, a dealer named Dick Fenton had it. Mm -hmm. I bought it from Dick Fenton. Yes. I paid $4,500 for that thing. But the, like Russell had noted, the collar base on the bottom had been polished. Mm -hmm. Well, when I had it and I put it in one of my auctions years ago, everybody poo-pooed it because of that base. A gentleman out in California named Don Moore bought it for $2,500. Yep. So here I lose 2000 Then I hear that after <laughs> George, George uh, Thomas had bought it and Karen had acquired it, they brought, what, 25000 there the other oh. week. Yep. So I just want to let you all know that that's sort of my luck, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I own that piece of one time. And I know. And the fan base next to it, the perfume, Lindsay, that's one of my favorite pieces of stretch. That, uh, well, why didn't you sell me that piece I, way back I, I then? Know, wait a minute, wait a 
that that was in Rose and Carl Slady's collection. Yes. And when I was there forty some years ago, when I was a kid, I saw that and I realized it was made for the perfume. While the, the, the son that inherited their collection didn't give me a chance to sell it. So when Seat was having that auction, I sort of surmised that was going on. And afterwards, I don't know if it was Cal or Russell that I'd seen first. But I asked, I said, was there a little Celeste Blue fan base there with a Diamond 12? And you guys had acquired it. And I was, I, and I, I think at that time I asked for visitation rights of it because I had, I had been part of that fan base for almost 50 years. So, yeah, great, yeah. great pieces. Just, a, you know, a little novelty stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I meant to bring it, but I didn't. Well, it might be in another box because we have boxes in our room. I tried to label it. Anyway, there was, what was it, Cal? The um, Adam's Rib Creamer Sugar in Creamer in Green. And Jim Seek put that in a box with broken pieces in it on there. And Cal and us were having fun, and Jim's looking at it like, what's going on here? You know, Jim is a super cool guy. Tom is the fun guy, but Jim Seek, he, he's super cool about things, but he didn't know what was going on at his auction there. And we kept bidding it up and kept bidding it up, and Jim's eyes are going back and forth, and like, something's going on here, and I didn't know it, you know? Yeah, at the, after the end of that auction, Jim said to me, he said, what was the deal with that creamer? Yes. And I told him, you know, it's this super rare, you know, we have lots of sugars, we've never seen mm -hmm. this creamer before, right, whatever. And um, he, he said, we're, you know, he said, well, you know, I was just going to throw that in a box off. And at the last minute, I decided to separate it out. So. Yeah. It was funny, though, watching Jim's face because he just couldn't figure out what was going on. And he was going back and forth. And, you know, he's super cool about things, but he wasn't that time. We got him, Cal. So, does anybody else have any more questions? Well, then we thank you for your attention. And you're welcome to come up and look at the glass.